Project 10, Launching versus Latching Forces. We replace the momentary switch with the press switch and we'll turn it on. After a few moments, the fan launches high in the air. Let's do that again. Now we have to note that the force launching the fan is obviously a launching force, but it is air pressure. Air pressure underneath the fan pushes it off the motor as it spins fast. If the fan does not launch, then the latching force will be in play and it will not allow the fan to lift up. The latch of the motor has some force, but the launching force should override that. If it doesn't, then you should make sure you have fresh batteries, make sure the motor is spinning in the right direction, and possibly caref and carefully give the fan a tap from underneath with your fingernail. Project 11, Magnet Controlled Flying Saucer. We replace the 62 press switch with the reed switch and we will put the magnet near it. The circuit has the same principle as number 10, but it uses the reed switch to operate. The motor wasn't spinning as long, so the fan did not shoot as high. One more time. There we go. Much higher. Project 12. Parts connected in series. Using this circuit, we will push the press switch, and the incandescent lamp and fan will come on. These two components are wired in series. And so there is only one path for the current from the batteries to flow through. You may notice that the fan is not spinning as fast as it has in other, in previous projects because the fan and the incandescent lamp are sharing the same path of electricity. And the lamp acts like a resistor for the current and so not as much gets to the fan. They don't receive an equal amount of energy. In addition, in a series circuit like this, if the fan, if one of the components was to fail, the other would fail as well because there'd be no other way for the current to flow. Project 13, inertia. We'll replace the press switch with the momentary switch and we will push and hold it down and then release it. The lamp will immediately turn off, but the motor will keep spinning for a brief second, even though there is no current applied to it as soon as I release the switch. The circuit is demonstrating the concept of inertia, which is a property of matter by which it continues in, in its existing state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line, unless that state is changed by an external force. In this case, it's the fan that keeps spinning because inertia is acting on it until it comes to a complete stop. But the lamp does not have inertia, and so it turns off immediately when the switch is released. Project 14, parts connected in parallel. Using this circuit, we will turn on the press switch, and both the fan and incandescent lamp will come on. You will notice that they are both operating at full power. The incandescent lamp might be hard to see because of the fan spinning, but they both are operating at full power. This circuit is a parallel circuit. The parts are wired in parallel, so they each get a, a fair amount of voltage from the batteries and therefore they can operate independently. Another advantage of a parallel circuit is that if one component was to fail, the other would stay on. One exa practical example of a parallel circuit is in Christmas lights. 
the lights are typically wired in parallel so that even if one light was to fail, the rest would stay lit. And it would also be easier to find the light that stopped working. Project 15, electrical current indicators. This circuit features both the incandescent lamp and the LED. They are wired in parallel and when we, when we turn on the press switch, both of them come on. They are acting like electrical current indicators because they light when electrical current goes through them. Now we can turn the LED around and while the incandescent lamp comes on, the LED does not. That's because current can flow through an LED in just one direction and since there's no current flowing through it, it will not light. More, there are more advanced devices called ammeters that measure the amount of electrical current flowing through a circuit. Project 16, power on indicator. We're going to use this circuit with the motor and LED wired in parallel. You'll see that there's no fan on the motor, not to mention that the cover for the LED will get in the way. Turn on the press switch and both the motor and LED come on. Now when viewed from a distance, you might not be able to tell that the motor is on without the fan attached, but the white LED lets you know whenever the motor is on because it lights up at the same time the motor comes on. When you turn the motor off, the LED goes off too. This is one example of an indicator light that is found in many electronic devices to indicate whenever they are on. Project 17, electronic efficiency. This circuit has the LED and incandescent lamp wired in series. Now of these two lighting components, which do you think is more efficient? Well, you're about to find out. Turn on the circuit and you'll see that only the LED comes on. The incandescent lamp stays off. That's because the current flowing through the circuit is pretty low. The LED has a resistor built into it because Otherwise, the current will be too high for the LED and it could damage it. Now, even though the current is low, while the incandescent lamp doesn't come on, the LED is very bright. And you can get an idea of how efficient LEDs are compared to incandescent lamps. They can light even on low current. Project 18, house wiring. Using this circuit, now note that the main components are on the third level. Note the blocks underneath. But this circuit will indicate common devices that are found in your house. They will imitate them. The press switch turns all of them on and you can pretend that the LED is a television, the motor is a ceiling fan, and the incandescent lamp is a table lamp. Now you can get a better idea about how devices in your home are wired. They are wired in parallel. So if you were to turn off any of these devices, whether the television, the fan, or the lamp, the rest will stay on since they each have their own path for electricity to flow through. And that's can very convenient. You wouldn't want all of your devices to turn off if you if you power off just one of them. Project 19, Ohm's Law. We are going to use this unswitched circuit which has the motor, LED, and lamp, and we are going to learn about Ohm's Law. All these parts are wired in series, and if we had a voltmeter and measured the voltage drop across each component of the circuit, we will notice that the voltage drop across the LED is a lot greater than that across the lamp or motor because the LED has the most resistance. Now Ohm's law is calculated by dividing 
the voltage, which is V, and the by the current, which is I. Current is measured in amps. And that will give us the resistance. So as a result, the high resistance from the LED is greatly restricting current to the other two components, and that's why in this case they do not work. The motor is not spinning and the lamp is not lighting. Each part is designed using Ohm's law to perform best when they have full battery voltage.